So in this video, we'll, we're going to look at uh, some of the concepts, basically norm, and basically we'll be looking at the norm of a vector and the dot product of a vector and associated ideas with these two concepts. So let's start with the norm. The norm is a very fundamental and important concept in vectors. It, it, is, it is a, uh, to, to go back to familiar um, grounds in R2 and R3, vectors that you're quite familiar with, um, as, we, as I said in the previous video, um, a vector in R2 or R3, it has, its definition is something that has direction and magnitude. So the norm basically helps us to isolate this magnitude that we are talking about. When, when we talk about Rn, it, it, one can think of this as a, some form of a measure of vectors. It's some form of a scalar measure of, a vector, um, of vectors. So the norm is indicated of a vector u, where u belongs to Rn, is indicated by having these two parallel lines around the vector. This indicates that we're now computing the norm of the vector. Now the Euclidean norm, the specific Euclidean norm of, because we are dealing with Euclidean vector spaces at the moment, all the rules and regulations we've looked at are for Euclidean vector spaces. So the Euclidean norm of u is simply u1 squared plus u2 squared plus up to un squared. Okay, So it is simply taking the uh, the sum of the squares of the components of any vector. So this is called the norm of the vector, um, or the magnitude, as, you, as I said. Quick example would be, suppose we have u equals 1, 5, 7, and of course this means we are dealing with R3, okay? Then the norm of u is simply the square root of 1 squared plus 5 squared plus 7 squared, so it's equal to, go to square root of 75. Okay, so it's equal to square root of 75. So that's, it's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. So just calculate, calculating the norm of the vector. Let's look at some quick properties associated with the norm. Um, assuming that the vector u belongs to Rn as above, and k is a scalar, so k is a scalar, okay, and u belongs to Rn. Following properties hold for the norm. The first is that the norm of the vector u is always greater than or equal to zero, which means it's always positive. We know this, again, going back to the geometrical ideas in R2 and R3 of magnitude, size is always positive, it is not negative. So, this simple. all norms are in fact positive. The next thing we look at, the, another property, is that if the, the norm of u is equal to zero, okay, if and only if u in fact is the zero vector itself, okay? So any non-zero vector uh, would have a, a non-zero norm. Okay, last, well, another property is that the norm of such a quantity where k is a scalar multiplied by u is simply, you can take the k out but its absolute value and multiply it into the norm of u. So a vector with norm 1 is called a unit vector. So if the norm of the vector, any vector, is 1, we say that that vector is called a unit vector. A reasonably straightforward concept, um, but it can be extended to any vector, in fact, in a way, which, which le leads to the idea of normalization. Okay, normalization of vectors. What that means is that uh, it is possible to isolate, for instance, again going back to R2 and R3, isolate the direction of the vector. Suppose you're not interested in the magnitude of the vector, you just want to know the direction. In order to do that, you can actually divide the vector by its magnitude and it becomes a unit vector uh, in a certain direction. You know the vectors i, j, k, for instance, um, the other notation for vectors in three dimensions and two dimensions i, j, uh, use that same idea. i, j, and k are unit vectors, in fact. So normalization of vectors, a vector u can be normalized okay, by dividing the vector by... its magnitude. 
So if we divide u by its magnitude, we normalize the vector. Okay? So if you were to take the norm of this vector, it would be clearly 1. So for instance, example, if you have the vector 1, 2, 3 in R3, the norm of 1, 2, 3 is the square root of 1 plus 4 plus 9 is the square root 14. So if I were to divide 1, 2, 3, multiply it by 1 over square root 14, it would become, its norm would be, of course, 1. So I've normalized the vector 1, 2, 3 in this manner. The distance between u and v, denoted by d u v, where u and v, again, both belong to Rn, is basically the norm of the difference between the two vectors. Okay? And we know how to calculate that. It's quite straightforward. So what we're going to look at next is the concept of the dot product of two vectors. Now, what, where does the dot product emanate from? Well, basically, if let's go back to the operations of algebra that we looked at. We looked at addition, subtraction, and multiplication of a vector by a scalar quantity. We've looked at equality of vectors. But we still haven't actually discussed what is the concept of multiplication of vectors. Well, we've discussed only one aspect of multiplication. That is when a scalar quantity is multiplied into a vector. What if two vectors are to be multiplied? How does multiplication take place? The, the dot product tries to shed some light on this idea when we are actually looking at the product uh, of two vectors. We call this the dot product of the vectors. And notation-wise, we write it like this, u dot v. The dot is, a familiar, um, is the familiar multiplication operation anywhere in general as well as you know uh, and of course it it also applies it, it also applies here however in multiplication of numbers 2 dot 3 is sometimes just written as 2 times 3 or x dot y is usually written as x y however this cannot be done in terms of in vectors whenever we talk about the product of two vectors u dot v we usually don't drop this uh, dot so, the Euclidean inner product. The Euclidean inner product in R2 and R3. So, the Euclidean inner product in R2 and R3 states that u dot v, in fact, is the norm of u multiplied by the norm of v into cosine of theta, where theta is the angle uh, between the two vectors u and v. So, here, geometrically in two dimensions, for instance, if this is u and this is v, then, the, then this is the angle theta between u and v. And of course, this relationship connects the two ideas. The dot product is in fact the norm of u, the norm of v, multiplied by cosine of theta. Right. And we have various ideas, um, but I don't want to delve into the geometry right now, and I don't want to really go much into the dot product as defined here. We will define the dot product uh, for n, Rn, in Rn, as follows. So we define the inner product as, in an alternative way, as follows. It is the product of the individual component, respective components of u and v, where u and v both belong to Rn. If u and v belong to Rn now, this product, u dot v, as given here, this one, holds for all vectors in um, Rn, in fact. So it does hold for R2, R3, and R4, and above. Okay, up to Rn. So I'll keep this definition here for the time being. Let's look at some rules. So if, again, assuming that u, v, and w uh, belong to Rn, and... K is a scalar. We have the following rules. Okay. First of all, the dot product of two vectors is the same irrespective of the order in which the dot product is taken. So u dot v is equal to v dot u. This is sometimes referred to as the symmetry property. Okay. The distributive law. There is a kind of distributive uh, property as well, just like in algebra, which is when 
u dot u dot v plus w for instance is u dot v okay plus u dot w okay next number three when a con a scalar is multiplied into the dot product of u and v that is the same as ku dot v careful on this one because it, 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 there's a tendency to think it's ku dot kv but that actually doesn't work out in fact uh, let me list all the properties and i'll show you how we can actually prove some of these uh, the last property uh, i want you to keep in mind is that v dot v okay is always the, the the inner product of v with itself is always greater than or equal to zero and if v dot v equals zero it's if and only if v in fact is the zero vector okay so these are some of the some important properties that uh, of the dot product that you should be familiar with now i, I would like to demonstrate how we could quickly prove uh, one of these and the one i want to look at is for instance, k times um, u dot v. So k times u dot v is basically just k into u1 v1 plus u2 v2 plus dot 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 up to u n v n. If you multiply them through, then it's like this, k1 u1 v1 plus k, sorry, not k1, k, k pardon me. Okay, so we end up with that, and and um, now you can actually group. You can only group these, for instance, either this or with v. So you group these together, and then you can dot product of ku with with v. Okay. Now, by the way, just to keep in mind, uh, this is also equal to. It's either this or it could also be written as u dot kv concept is the same these equivalent ideas all right so i'm going to continue on with some more properties um, um, number five for instance if we multiply the zero vector into the vector u that is equal to zero 